I can hear me now. All right. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Well, I tell you what, this week, uh, because my wife won't let me do a lot of work out there, which I'm milking this, by the way, uh -oh. all I can. Uh, <laughs> I got uh, got a lot of good face time with God. There you go. And uh, <clears throat> that's the blessing that uh, you get when you get injured. You get a lot of face time with God. So, like, like I said last week, we we need to talk about the elders. We have an elder election coming up well, next week, or week after. Next week. Good thing I did this week, huh? <laughs> and what came to mind when I'm out there and, and snuck into the stallion pen and was playing with the stallion and my wife lost her mind. Um, first of all, I had a friend come over to uh, trim his hooves because obviously I came. So he came over, trimmed the hooves. And when I went in there, of course, we've been feeding him, trying to bulk him up before breeding season. Because, you know, when they start that, they just, like, lose all our weight. They don't, they don't eat, sleep, or anything. And so, been feeding him some good hot feed and some alfalfa. And we couldn't get him to stand still. Well, the guy that, that came up is, is an amazing horseman. Matter of fact, he came up here uh, with his horse and dogs, David Hartwood. I might remember him. So he came up and he said, uh, hmm, he's kind of like a professional wrestler on crack cocaine. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, well, you ever see them little seventh grade boys get out there? And then, you know, that's what he's like. He said, uh, mind if I try something? Yeah, go ahead. And I've been trying to get him to come around, you know, and he says, well, you know, <laughs> I love the way he said, he's been training on you since I got here. I said, he's been training on me? Yeah, what's this? And he got the rope, he got the lead rope, and when the horse starts pulling back, he walked with him. And we walked all around that round pin, just it never let the slack, and never let the slack get out of that rope, you know, and he walked with him, and he'd make him move this way, make him move back this way. And that stallion just kind of, Finally, he gets tired because his back end's tired from backing up so much. He said, all right, now we can trim him. And he leads him up, drops the lead rope. Here, you hold him for you. He said, no, he ain't going to move. He walked all the way around him, trimming hooves. Stallion never budged, like he was anchored to a rock. And when he stood, we started talking. He said, you know, I've messed with a lot of stallions in my life, and I've learned that in order for a stallion to be safe, you know, when y'all came out to the house, ladies, remember PJ was saying, don't pet the stallion. Stallions are notorious. Notorious for being real friendly, and you get up close to them and take a chunk out of you. you start, or you get close to them and they'll reach around and kick you. You know, they're just, they want to say, hey, look, I'm in charge. He said, a stallion, when he's in the, in the wild, his job is security. He's got to look for boogers everywhere because he is in charge of the security for that herd. Now, when he gets here, when we capture him and make him a, a domestic horse, as a stallion, he's still got that instinct. I said, okay. He said, now, you can drive a car, right? I said, yes, sir. If you and me went on a trip and I was not paying attention to the road, you'd get a little scared, wouldn't you? Because you're in tune to watching that road. That makes sense. Well, he said, if I'm driving good and I'm, I'm watching the road, I'm paying attention to what's going on around me, you don't worry, do you? No. He said, I'm look at this horse. If you do not have him to where he completely trusts you, then he's going to try to take over. I said, okay, that makes sense. He said, now to make a horse, uh, a stallion completely safe, one phrase always comes to mind. Nothing uncued. 
if I walk in this pen and this stallion starts to turn around, retribution comes. I want him looking at me, paying attention to me. If I walk beside him and reach down and pick up a foot and he steps to the side, he gets punished. If I walk up to him and he leaves, roots his nose out to me, he gets punished. So why? He said, because I didn't tell him he's okay to do that. And when he is completely under your command, when he does not do anything without you telling him it's okay, he is content. It kind of sounds strange, doesn't it? But now he doesn't have to worry. He knows Jay's got my back. Jay's going to take care of everything. I, I don't have to worry about it. I can lay down and go to sleep. How many of us worry about some foreign country coming into the U.S. and taking over? None. Why? Because we got some folks standing on a wall saying, no, 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 not today. And so that's why the troop box is here. We support the guys that stand on the wall and say, you go to sleep. I've got this. We should be that way. And I thought about this. And, and preparing my sermon all week, and I'm, and I'm thinking about different things. Now, there's a passage in a book by Louis Lamore, Tame, Tame the West, I believe it was, where a guy was talking about a steer. And he was talking to some folks, and... and, and he couldn't hire any hands, didn't have the money. So this woman and her daughter rode with him and they had a kid with him. And he says, so there it was. I took a herd into San Antonio with two women, a child of 14, but I had an old mossy horn. And he liked to travel. And he was worth 14 hands. Thinking about that mossy horn. Two things were always in a herd when they left Texas going to Kansas or going to wherever they went on them cattle drives. Two things were on every payroll, on every herd. They had two things that they took and they brought back. Now they might go in there and gamble away their guns, their clothes, their horses, but there's two things they did not take a chance on. One was a chuck wagon. Always had to have food. They had a chuck wagon, and a chuck wagon is designed to feed 13 people. That's 12 cowboys and a cook. 13 people from the road on the road from South Texas to Abilene, Kansas. Or Dodge City, whichever one they were going to. The other thing that they did not ever chance was an old mossy horn steer. They called them mossy horns because the steer was so old that moss was growing on his horns. What it is, the, the old horns get to flaking real bad because they're so old and the skin starts getting bad on it. But they called him a mossy horn. Why did they have them? They'd tie a bell on his horn or around his neck. Because when the, when the cattle got trail rope, <clears throat> they, would, they would follow that mossy horn, that, uh, that old cow. That old steer. That old steer probably been back and forth to Kansas 20 times. He didn't care about boogers in the grass. Oh, I've got to explain that. <laughs> Last time I did that, I was talking to somebody else, and I said, uh, yeah, my horse is broke. You don't see no boogers. And my daughter went, Boogers in the grass? Okay. That's short for the booger man. You know what I mean? The, the things that scare you. The, you know, the, the, the horse-eating culverts and, and things like that. <clears throat> so, this old mossy horn didn't spook for any of that. He walked. When a storm come up, he knew it was just a storm. He's going to keep on walking. When you've got a, a you know, a, a long yearling or a two-year-old steer, they get a little worried. Never spooked. When 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 the cowboys got him going, he knew which way Kansas was. He could probably take the herd himself there and back. You know what I mean? 
He was dependable. And he could point to her, and all the cowboys had to do was worry about keeping them in, in a bunch. All right. Now, when you're talking three, four, five hundred cattle in a herd, and 13, usually, 13 kids, or a cook, a, a, a trail boss, and 11 kids, then, you know, it takes a, quite a hand. There was, uh, most of the cowboys back then started from trailing cattle at about 12. Of course, they lived to the ripe old age of 30. <laughs> And, and, and I asked somebody, why do you think they, I asked my dad one time, why do you think they, they live so short, dad? He said, well, one's lifestyle, and the other is, they ate the four beans. Beef, biscuits, bacon, and, and can't even remember the rest of them. Beans. Beans. Butter, butter, beef, biscuits, bean, beans, and butter. That's, that's their staple, you know? Bacon, beef, biscuits, bacon, and Something like that. Anyway, they ate poorly and worked all day, you know, but sometimes 20 hours a day. Don't leave a whole lot of sleep time, does it? But they always had that mossy horn, and they always brought him back. He never saw the inside of a cattle car. He walked to Kansas and back his whole life. Well, each church should have a few of those. Don't you think? Now, sometimes in Mossy Horns were, were getting old and cantankerous, Steve, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they were, they were <clears throat> a little bit more lively and rebellious, Harry, and <laughs> most of the time they were just solid, didn't spook at anything, just kind of complacent. They, <laughs> and I, I said these three names because we have three of them right here. One of them is to be put to pasture, <laughs> and we're going to get another one in. There's rules for how they should be. You know, everybody has to have a, a, a job description. I like the one in Titus. Uh, Titus 1, <clears throat> excuse me. Starting in 5. Paul's talking to Titus. He said, the reason I left you in Korea, I'm sorry, go ahead. Titus 1, verse 5. I keep forgetting to do that. What y'all turn? Thank God I've seen more people turning pages now. Or looking on their iPads or iPhones or Androids. Or my half times have changed. Or some of us have got memorized. Not me. So. Titus 1 verse 5. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might straighten out what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town, as I directed you. An elder must be blameless, husband of but one wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer is entrusted with God's work, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught, so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. Now, I read that, and taking that and putting it on that old mossy horn steer, that mossy horn steer did nothing but walk. But because he commanded respect, they followed. Now I'm sure if one of them got up there to uh, challenge his challenge his right to to lead, 
I'm sure he'd get, get after him. But his main purpose was to lead by example. An elder's main purpose is to lead those who are young in Christ by the example of their life. Now, elders in our church are have, have more of a, a, of a leadership responsibility in that when being the pastor, I've got to pastor those who sometimes get disobedient and, and, and cause problems. As Paul said before, you know, I'm, I despise controversy. I really don't like it. But to keep, if, I'm going to pick on somebody, uh, if Ann was to go over to PJ, I told so I could pick on her, not get beat up. If Ann was to go over to PJ and, and start some trouble, if I went to them too and then I broke up the fight and kind of, you know, admonished them, there would be a problem with me being their pastor from now on because they're going to remember that admonishment. However, elders can step in and say, look, y'all need to cut this nonsense out, sit down, pay attention, and, and, and hug each other. And did that, they can still worship here. You know what I mean? They might not like that elder, but they can still worship here. As a pastor, sometimes people hurl rocks at me. I'm pretty tough. I can handle it. Then they throw boulders. <laughs> I'm pretty tough, but their job is to say, okay, look, you know, the pastor has to focus on God's Word. So what, when y'all throw rocks, let, let us take in rocks and we'll, we'll deflect them. That's what elders do. Their other job is, if I was to get up here and start preaching something other than what's in this Bible right here, they kick me in the backside and straighten up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, my responsibility to them is also keep them on track, but also pray diligently by name every day, which I do. And ensure God is with them. Now, I have no complaints since I've been here about any of the elders that we've had. Because they're strong men of God. If I had to worry about them, I couldn't focus on what God's telling me to do. I would be split between what God's telling me to do and what they're supposed to do. <clears throat> Thank God that He has given us strong elders. But the most important thing they do is to just walk. They walk with one goal in, in, in their sights, and that's heaven. As they're walking, people see them. They see that, that, that they deserve respect. Not because one of the elders says, you, know, you need to respect me, I'm an elder. No. Usually they don't have to say that because people see them, they see what kind of a godly man they are, and they follow. That's what an elder's for. <clears throat> I'm going through all of this to remind you there are three men who next week will be voted for to see if who gets to, gets to serve as an elder. I say gets to serve as an elder and they're going, gets to? <laughs> that is Ty Phelps, Doug Parchman, and Warren Brown. Now, all three of this, these men I've talked to, all the elders got together when these nominations came in and said, okay, are these guys going along with this? Are they, you know, not a young Christian? Have they been around a while? Been walking with the Lord a while? 
I have actually talked to all three of them, and they have at different times. I've talked to them. When they look at it, are these guys walking close with the Lord now? Yeah, I believe they are. All three are, are excellent candidates. But this isn't a popularity contest. God calls one of these men for a three-year term. God has called Harry, Steve, and David. I believe that. I don't think that people are elected. I think people are called. And the election process confirms that calling. If, if we elect them, God made the, uh, the people made the decisions. But if they're called and we confirm it, through an election, God called. Now, I want you to think about the three men. As a matter of fact, after church, go and shake hands with them. Ask them a question or two if you want to. I won't put them on the spot now. Ask them a question or two if you want to. They won't campaign. I know they don't. Because if they did, they wouldn't be older materials. You know what I mean? But they are men who lead by example. Now, what does it mean to the rest of us? As we're going through our life, God said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And remember that I'm with you even until the end of the earth. So, as we're walking, we find somebody and say, man, that guy's really in tune with God. I do not see him making one move that is not cued by God. Because if he's walking with God and he does something uncued, God spanks him for it. I know this. Man, that man, that man is really walking with God. Let me step in behind him and see if I can't see if I can't be like that and, and, and look for look at God nowhere else. Pretty soon we got a whole herd spread out in a teardrop. The rest of us, <clears throat> how do how do we make disciples? Do we beat on them until they comply? No. That was the Spanish Inquisition. And it didn't work back then either. <laughs> Do we keep bumping them in the head with the Bible? Well, hey, come on, listen to me. Hey, come on, listen to me. Listen to me. No, we don't. We live the way God said to live. And we follow the example of Christ who was, in my eyes, the ultimate elder because he walked in the way of God his whole life. Okay, so he was God, but he walked in the way of God his whole life, and he did nothing wrong ever. So we should walk like him. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think an elder is perfect? No, they mess up, just like everybody else, but when they mess up, what do they do? Lord, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. They get up and they keep walking toward heaven. As we walk, as we're walking through the life, right, through life, and we want to be part of God's world, and we fall in with these elders, and we try to try to walk as close to God as we can. There's one step missing in that. We have to have a relationship with Christ. We have to talk to Him daily. We at least have to talk to Him once. When, when we start a relationship with Jesus Christ, with God through Jesus Christ, when we talk to God and say, Lord, I am so sorry for what I've done. Please forgive me. We've stepped into that hurt. We start walking toward heaven. And as we're going along, we grow. We're not always perfect. We mess up, we stumble, we fall. We get back up and we keep walking. But 
we have a relationship with our master. And we find those who are, are walking the way that we should. And we follow. That's how we grow. We go to the Bible studies on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday nights. Go to all of them. Have Bible studies in your house. We study the Bible. We talk to God through prayer. He talks to us. Not in a voice like I'm talking to you now, but in a spiritual voice. He's just a, a thought inside your mind you can't get rid of. And I've tried. You cannot get rid of those thoughts. God talks to you. And when I started listening to God, it started getting easier. He talks to you through the lives of your brothers and sisters in Christ. He talks to you in the wind and the leaves. He talks to you in the bleat of a young animal, whether it be cow, goat, horse, whatever. He talks to you through his creations. Is there a time in your life, if you look back, think about it, is there ever, has there ever been a time in your life where you have started talking to God and say, please, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me and let me walk with you. If you can't look back and, and, and put your finger on, on that point in time, I want to give you that opportunity right now. It's not hard to do, and I know I've been talking about the elders up here, and, and, and you might be thinking, oh man, I can't walk like that. Listen, when we started walking, we fell a lot. But we get, kept getting up and walking. That's all we have to do. We just keep walking toward a purpose. As long as that purpose is, is our Master, the Heavenly Father, through His Son, Jesus Christ, you're going the right way. You've never prayed this prayer. I pray that you, you, you follow me in this. <laughs> Lord, I know I've done wrong. I'm separated from you because of it. Lord, I'm so sorry. I ask you today, Lord, to come up, Lord, and, and empty the sin out of my heart. Pull that devil out of my head. Lord, fill me up with your Holy Spirit so that I can be walking with you every day, every, every step. That you walk with me and you protect me from the Satan and the... And the evils of the world. Lord, I pray that I keep my eyes on you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, before we go, I want to ask some people to come up here. The three present elders. Would y'all come up here for a second? I love putting people on the spot because it's so fun. Now I get beat up for it later. These are our three mossy horns. I love it. <laughs> and we're going to put the, one of them is, is ready to go pasture for a couple of years. Uh, I, I, I like Steve because he's kind of subtle as a chainsaw. <laughs> and when you, when you say, man, that probably needs to be taken care of. Well, let me, I got this. I got this for you. So, it's been a, been a joy having him up here. But Steve's going to go, and then the other two will be here for. I can't remember which one drops off next year, but oh, be. We got to put up with him for two more years. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> the next. Uh, next, I would like the three guys that are. You, you can go stand there. Next, I'd like the three guys that are going to be elected elder. Look, sit down. Yeah, y'all go now. Yeah. Uh, Those are coming up there. Warren saying, I ain't going up there by myself. Wait. And Ty was an elder, and he's 